sides. We just call the running between the server and Marwa. We just done usually seven times before programs will retire for other key functions in the Hajj. From the stadium, the group proceeded to the Fajara beach, where different posts were fixed to represent Arafat, Mina, Muzdalifa, and Jamra. The exercises here were tedious and really tested the preparedness of intended pilgrims towards the holy journey. The chairman of GIA Hajj team and the chairman of the Hajj Commission, Lamin Cham and Dr. Mbaika, respectively, held the positive role played by all stakeholders to make this year's preparation a success. As the saying goes, now, through practice, you can gradually gain perfection. And uh, the level of cooperation you know, that you know, we have received you know, from the intended pilgrims you know, is very, very good. Uh, so far, you know, they have uh, undergone all the necessary rights you know, attached to Hajj. And we think that you know, they will replicate the same thing you know, when they go to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I'm very impressed of um, what I saw since yesterday uh, because the pilgrims, I understand that there is a big improvement of uh, um, uh, identifying who is, um, should go to Mecca. So the guys also, alhamdulillah, I mean, they understand now how to walk with the pilgrims. So thanks to the Ministry of Health for their um, job well done because of I understand that the screening this year is better than last year. And also the, 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 the guides, they understand it. Every year we see um, improvement on their, on their works. And I understand that all the pilgrims, male and female, they all appreciate what is, what is going on, yes. The exercise, according to intended programs like Tombong Sise, Fatu Jalo, and Lang Sabali, has prepared them mentally and physically to perform their rights in Mecca and Medina. What officials now expect after a two day intensive training is a hitch free Hajj that will be memorable to everyone that undertook the journey to Mecca this year. Abu Bakr Dabo, GRTS. The leader of the Rainbow Push Coalition, Reverend Jesse Jackson, and eight others arrived in the Gambia on Sunday afternoon. The veteran American civil rights leader, who is on a visit, was received at the foot of the aircraft by the Secretary General and Head of the Civil Service, Dr. Njogu Elba, who also doubles as the Minister of Presidential Affairs and National Assembly Matters, the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Modlam Njobate, and the U.S. Ambassador to the Gambia. Reverend Jackson is expected to meet the President's Excellency, Chef Professor Haji Dr. Yehaya Jame, during his stay. Pope Benedict XVI doesn't want the youths of Syria to abandon their country despite the incessant conflict. Two members of parliament in the DRC accused of aiding the notorious M20 rebels find out why some people believe the marriage of Zimbabwean Prime Minister has gone wrong. We'll be back with more stories after this break. Well, uh, the streets have a conclusive agreement on one issue the love for homegrown entertainment. Again, the best videos might be with you, but they cannot be played on the show if you don't pass them. Welcome back. At a time when warring factions in Mali are showing no signs of giving up, authorities in French Guinea have seized an armed shipment that was headed to Mali. The shipment was ordered by the Assad president, Amadou Toumare Toure, while he was in power. However, it could not reach the country on time. The Guinean government intercepted the shipment and reported the matter to the Economic Community of West African States to decide over the fate of the armed stock at the Kanak reports. Details in this report. Weeks this arms shipment has been kept aboard a Turkish cargo ship at Conakry's port. The arsenal had been bound for Mali. It was former President Amadou Tamani Toure who ordered the arms, but after power changed hands, authorities were at a loss as to what to do with them. Erring on the side of caution, Guinean authorities decided to turn to the economic community of West African states for advice. Le fait que les armes soient retenues 
The decision to hold the arms shipment here was one taken by the head of ECOWAS, who decided to keep the arms in Guinea in order to monitor the situation in Mali and to ensure that they do not end up in enemy hands. The decision to halt the shipment sparked anger among Mali's military, who have since sent envoys to Conakry to meet with the Guinean authorities and the ECOWAS delegation. The regional organization is set to hold a special meeting on Monday. The Roman Catholic Church has urged the warring factions in Syria to embrace peace and harmony. Pope Benedict XVI was speaking before thousands of Christians and Muslims in Beirut, the Lebanese capital, as part of his three-day visit to the country. As we hear in this report, the Pope urged the youths of Syria to stay in the country despite the rise in Islamic fundamentalism. Thousands flocked to Beirut's seafront early on Sunday morning to take part in an open-air mass. The visit of the Pope uh, is uh, a very good step and uh, a hope for uh, Lebanese uh, to stay in Lebanon and to live together in, in love and peace. Shouts of joy and a sea of yellow and white flags, the colors of the Vatican. It's the highlight of Pope Benedict XVI's three-day visit to Lebanon, the first papal visit in 15 years. Members of the Christian community as well as Muslims gathered to listen to the Pope's speech. In it, he appealed to the crowd to be peacemakers and prayed for an end to the violence in neighboring Syria. I appeal to the international community. I appeal to the Arab countries that, as brothers, they might find workable solutions which respect the dignity, the rights, and the religion of every human being. The Pope called for peace between warring factions as well as different religious communities throughout the Middle East. He also urged members of the Christian community, both old and young, which is deeply divided over the Syrian conflict, to stay in Lebanon, despite a rise in Islamic fundamentalism. You are meant to be the protagonist of your country's future and to take your place in society and in the church. In a visit that centered on the promotion of peace, the Pope also reached out to moderate Islamists in a bid to combat religious extremism in the region. We now take our second break. We'll be right back. Over now to the sports news. Fatu Sengwar Tambajang, a businesswoman and proprietor of Fatima's training, is the latest Gambian to support the country's female under-17 team by donating football gears to the World Cup-bound girls, who are presently camped in Morocco preparing for their maiden participation in the FIFA Junior Championship in Azerbaijan. Modo Estjalo witnessed the presentation of the materials at the JFA house and he now tells us more. ...is to go and win the cup. Yeah. Those were the words of the darling under-17 female Scorpions, shortly before jetting out of the country for Azerbaijan via Morocco, where they are presently camped. Well, almost a week after leaving the source of the country for the World Junior Championship, support is still pouring in for the baby Scorpions. The latest being these beautiful and quality football gears donated by Fatima Tasengwa Tambajan, the proprietors of Fatima Trading. She donated 30 sets of jerseys, 30 socks, and 10 track suits which were handed to the GFA for onward delivery to the team in Azerbaijan. This was in fulfillment of a promise she made upon hearing of the Baby Scorpions' qualification to the FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup. The Gambia's maiden appearance in the tournament. It all started when the, the girls... Uh... Well, we apologize for that. And before we go, a reminder of our headlines. 
President Jame has described as rubbish negative criticisms that the suspension of the execution of the remaining dead row convicts was due to pressure from the international community. The veteran American civil rights leader, Reverend Jesse Jackson, has arrived in the country for